Gorgosaurus was a tyrannosaur coming from the northern part of North America around 75 million years ago. And there's been some questions as to why the Tyrannosaurus as a whole, including Gorgosaurus, became so dominant in their environments for about the last 30 to 20 million years of the Cretaceous, essentially right into the lead up where the non-avian dinosaurs would go extinct. There's been a lot of questions as to why this is the case, and now at least some people are starting to research that, including a friend who presented at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology about one of the attempts to try and mathematically show that, yeah, it's weird what's happening with tyrannosaurs when the tyrannosaurs are the largest predators in the environment. And yeah, it seems like the tyrannosaurs really were pushing out most of those other predators, these smaller predators that are called mesopredators. In general, predators in the same environment will try and occupy different niches. You can think of that where the red wolf has been reintroduced into parts of Arizona, and there's still coyotes there. It's just the red wolf is going after generally larger prey, and the coyotes are more targeting smaller prey. So they're not directly competing as much as they might if they were targeting the same prey. So why did the Tyrannosaurs not let other animals also survive by targeting different prey? Well, this fossil of Gorgosaurus really helps to show why that might be the case, and it's because potentially in Tyrannosaurs, they underwent an ontogenetic niche shift, which just means as the animals got older, they were feeding on different prey when they were young versus old. This shift meant that the adult Tyrannosaurs were competing with adults of other large theropods, but more importantly, they were able to, when young, push out the other predators that would have been in the environment because they would have been targeting a lot of those same animals. And this wonderful fossil of Gorgosaurus actually really helps to show that because it had stomach contents preserved and they're very interesting stomach contents. The fossil shows a young Gorgosaurus about six years old and it actually has the stomach contents of two different dinosaurs. And I say that because importantly, there's three legs from one species of dinosaur but it's an oviraptorosaur, specifically Cidipes. And really importantly, it ran around on two legs, so having three legs mean it had to have killed two separate individuals, or at least fed from two separate individuals of Cidipes. Additionally, these were young Cidipes. Based on being able to cut open the bone and look for lines of arrested growth, which show when the animals slow down their growth, these Cidipes would have been less than a year old, so it was really targeting young individuals. This means this young Gorgosaurus, which would have weighed about 335 kilograms, or around 750 pounds, would have been really targeting prey that the adults really wouldn't want to target. A small city pez like that really wouldn't be worth it for the effort of chasing it down to try and hunt it for an adult Gorgosaurus, which could have weighed nearly 10 times as much. Importantly though, this also tracks with what we expect based on energy consumption models, where it's very likely that Young tyrannosaurs were mostly eating small lizards, insects, and potentially amphibians, things like that. Meanwhile, once they got up to a bit larger, then they could start tackling prey around their same size. And this would probably be when they were around 40 or so kilograms, or a little bit over 80 pounds. Meanwhile, had this Gorgosaurus lived, it would have taken another five years or so before it was tackling the really large prey that would have been in the environment, things like large ceratopsians potentially. And that really seems to be the case based on differences in how the skull would have been structured. Young Tyrannosaurs actually had more blade-like teeth, very similar to those you find in other theropods. But adult Tyrannosaurs, they kind of ditched the more blade-like teeth and developed more spike-like teeth as well as getting a very short series of teeth at the front of the jaw that actually would have been flattened on the back side of them so they could scrape meat. And this seems to be adaptations for eating and taking down larger prey. Meanwhile, the more blade-like teeth could, for example, dismember a leg from a body of a small animal pretty easily. We also have good evidence that these weren't fossils that were all just pushed together by some kind of a storm. And that's because they are inside the ribs, both the upper main ribs and the gastrolia or belly ribs, but also they were able to take scanning electron microscope photos of the legs that were in the stomach. And the one that's rearmost is more dissolved and pitted the way you would expect in an acidic environment, i.e. a stomach. What this means is that it seems like young Gorgosaurus were targeting young animals, and potentially also just other smallish animals, so this doesn't mean it was only eating on oviraptorans like Cidipes. It could have also been targeting things like young Pachycephalosaurus, but also things like the Orictodromines, which we actually just did a video on one of those where they looked at their brains and were able to say, hey, these were probably burrowing. So it was a very diverse ecosystem as far as what kind of prey things like Gorgosaurus could have targeted, even when they were pretty young. 
And a lot of these animals would have been built with very strong hind legs. There actually would have been a large muscle running from parts of the tail down to the femur, and that would have provided a lot of nutritional value that would have been easy to access. It also means that seemingly Gorgosaurus, or at least young Gorgosaurus, really liked legs. And that makes sense. A lot of these animals would have been built kind of like a turkey. Not a turkey that you get at the store from a farmer, where they've been bred for more breast meat, but more like a wild turkey, where a lot of that muscle mass is in those legs. So it makes sense based on what we expect in the fossil record, and now we have hard evidence of how things like Gorgosaurus, or at least young Gorgosaurus, may have been feeding. Really, this is a great paper with a fantastic, fantastic fossil. Unfortunately, though, I think there's just one issue with it in that they kind of suppose that this is the reason the Tyrannosaurus became successful, is this niche partitioning. But unfortunately, we don't really have direct evidence in support or against the idea of niche partitioning in other theropods. Something like Allosaurus could have very easily been doing the same thing with the young targeting smaller prey. We just don't have the fossils to show that, unfortunately. So I think it's a little simplistic to say, hey, this kind of niche partitioning between adults and young of the Tyrannosaurs is what really led to their success. I think there's going to be something a little more complex found in the future that's going to help support this, but I don't know what that would be. It just takes more people getting out there and finding more wonderful fossils like this one. And who knows, maybe we'll find something where, no, the young allosaurs were actually just directly following their parents. So they didn't actually interact with these young, small animals in the same way. That would have then left space open for tyrannosaurs to start to exploit different niches and then eventually push those animals out of them. It could also be something as simple as finding nests of these animals. Potentially, tyrannosaurs just laid something like 50 eggs, and the other allosaurs and large predators laid something more like 10. At that rate, you're going to have more competition for those younger spaces that just mathematically are more likely going to go to tyrannosaurs, and that potentially could have led to the extinction of those other animals, because they wouldn't have had as many reaching adulthood. Regardless, though, again, this is an incredible fossil, and I'm really happy to see that this got published, because I had no idea that there was a fossil rumored to have stomach contents from a tyrannosaur, especially one that's so young. Most young animals don't fossilize that well, so having one here is really, really wonderful.